Hello and welcome to Linux Server Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from SoundTraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based provider of learning resources to the IT community. This time I'm going to show you how to use rsync to synchronize files between servers. This video is based on Chapter 13 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Linux Server Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide. The book is not required, but if you'd like to get a copy to follow along, it's available from Amazon and other resellers in both paperback and Kindle edition. Prerequisites for this exercise, you'll need CentOS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.5 installed on your computers. Now, uh, that's what I'm using for the demonstration. The procedures I'm going to show you will work with lots of different Red Hat-based versions of uh, Linux, so uh, you may be able to use this just fine with a different version, but the one I'm using is CentOS version 6.5. And you'll also need internet access in order to download uh, rsync from the YUM repositories. Equipment software requirements, two network computers. They can be either virtual machines or physical machines. I'm using VMs running inside VMware Workstation 10.0.2, uh, but you could certainly use VirtualBox or um, Hyper-V or any other virtualization environment, or if you want to hook up a couple of physical boxes, you can certainly do that as well. Here's a summary of the steps. I'll install rsync using yum on both computers. I'll create a test directory with some files in it, and then I'll test it by using the rsync command to synchronize files between the two computers. Here's your disclaimer. Basically, what this boils down to is don't do this without testing it first to make sure you've got current backups and take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data, which you should be doing anyway, right? Now, I've set up two machines for the demonstration, Linux Server 01, which is the machine I'm on right now, as you can see from the prompt. And this is going to act as our primary, if you will. This will be the source of the files that we'll synchronize to the client, which will be Linux Server 02. So the first thing we need to do is install the rsync utility. We'll use yum to do that, yum minus y to respond yes to any confirmation requests. And then we'll do install and rsync. And it whirs for a moment. It'll be a fairly quick installation uh, because there's only one package. In fact, there, it's done. Now, the other thing let's do before we go over to Linux Server 02, our client, is on our server, let's add a test directory and populate it with some files. So we'll use the command make dir rsync demo. And that's going to create the rsync demo directory in uh, as a subdirectory off of my home directory. In fact, if I do the command pwd, you can see that I'm in root's home directory, and I'm logged on as root, obviously. Uh, if I do the command ls, you can see that there's rsync demo, the directory we just created. Let's navigate to it, so we'll cd to rsync demo. Let's use the touch command. Touch is normally used when we want to modify timestamps on files, but it's a handy tool to use if you want to just create some blank files to have some files to work with. So we'll use touch, file 1, file 2, file 3. So that's going to create three blank files that we can use for playing. And we'll do the ls command so you can see them. Now let's go over to Linux Server 02 and set it up. As you can see, we're on Linux Server 02. Look at the prompt and it'll tell you. And let's also install rsync here. So we'll use yum minus y install rsync. It whirs for a moment, does the installation, and it's done. We need to create the target directory as well. So let's use the command make dir and rsync demo. It's done. You don't need to call it rsync demo. You could use an existing directory. You could create a, a directory with your own name, whatever you want to do. But you do have to have a target directory for the synchronization to work. Now let's go back to the server, Linux Server 01, and uh, try an rsync command. The command I'm about to use will transfer these three files, actually the contents of the rsync demo directory, to the target that I specify. So we'll start with the command rsync. Now we're going to specify options, and I'll use two this time around. We'll do the V option for verbose, so you can just see the process as it takes place. And minus E allows us to specify the remote shell. If you don't do this, then by default, rsync does the transfers in clear text, and you know that may not be that big a deal on a trusted network, but it's kind of a bad practice to get into, even on a trusted network. I prefer to use SSH just to be in the, in the habit. So we'll specify SSH as the remote shell. And then we need to specify our source and then the target. Our source is on the local machine. It is, in fact, slash root slash rsync demo. And we'll put in a star to make sure that we transfer the entire contents of rsync demo to the target. And since we're using SSH, we also need to use the login name. So the login name is going to be root at 
the target IP address, 192.168.0.2. If you have names resolution set up, then certainly you could specify a, a host name or a fully qualified domain name, but I'm not using that here. So we'll just go with the IP address and a colon. And I could also type in root rsync demo as well, but let's do it this way. Let's put in a tilde to specify the home directory of whomever the login is. In this case, it's root and a forward slash to rsync demo. Now, if I hit the enter key, it should work. It'll prompt us for a password, and there's the password. This is the password of the user on the remote system. And there it goes, as expected. And let's go back over to the other machines so that you can see that indeed they did transfer. Notice again the prompt is specifying Linux Server 02, and we'll use the command ls. Oops, we need to change directory into rsync demo. My apologies for that. And there you can see with the ls command the three files that we just transferred. Well, like they say on late night TV, but wait, there's more. Um, let's try this. Let's go back over to Linux Server 01. We're now in Linux Server 01. Let's add another file to the mix. So we'll use the command touch file 4. Do an ls command. There you can see file 4. And let's modify that last command. So I'm going to touch the up arrow a couple of times to bring up the last rsync command that we used. If I execute this command, it's going to synchronize all of the files in the directory. In fact, let's go ahead and do it just so you can see what I'm talking about. So we'll put in the password and it's going to synchronize all four files, the new one as well as the three that were already there. We don't need to to actually synchronize the first three because they haven't changed. And there's actually an algorithm that you can use in, in conjunction with rsync just by using the minus U option that will tell rsync to look at things like timestamps and file size to decide whether a file has been modified since the last rsync. And if it has, then it will do the transfer. And if it hasn't, then it'll leave it in place. So it's a great way of conserving bandwidth and, and time. Let's do this. So I'm going to add another file into the mix. This time we'll do touch file five. And we'll touch the up arrow a couple of times to repeat the rsync command. But this time I'm going to go in and I'm going to add the minus u option. Now it's important to note that I put it at the beginning of the options list. If you put it the, at the end, then it'll throw off an error and it won't work. But if you put it at the beginning like I did, this should work perfectly. So let's try it now. We'll hit the enter key. I'm going to put in the password. And look at that. It transferred a single file. So it's a great way of conserving bandwidth. And if you have a big file server with lots of files on it, obviously your first rsync is going to take a long time. But subsequent ones then can be a lot faster and obviously not use as much bandwidth. Same thing with, with web servers. In fact, that's what I do. I've got a pair of web servers in different cities. One is a backup to the other, and I use rsync to back up the contents of the primary to the secondary using a cron job so it's done automatically. And that's a pretty common use of rsync and cron. Now there's one other thing I want to show you before we end the demo. Let me add one more file to the mix. So I'm going to do touch file 6. Now let's go back over to Linux Server 02. And now that we're on Linux Server 02, let's execute the command rsync from here. In other words, you can execute rsync on either the source or the destination computer. You just have to specify the source and destination files and directories in order to make it work. So we'll do rsync minus u minus v minus e ssh and we've got to specify the source. Well, the source this time is the remote system instead of the local system. So we're going to do root at 192.168.0.1 colon. We can either use the explicit directory path or we can use the tilde. I'll go ahead and use the explicit path this time. So root and then rsync demo. And then the target, which in this case is slash root slash rsync demo. And let's go ahead and hit the enter key. Something missing? There is. There's something that is missing that would cause it to fail. Let's go back and correct this. We need to specify we're going to transfer all of the files. And now we'll hit the Enter key. Or I should say all of the files that have been changed. And there it goes. File 6 is the one that uh, got transferred over. And let's take a look. We'll do an ls command, an rsync demo on Linux Server 02. And we should see all six files. And in fact, there they are.
So that should give you a pretty good idea of some things that you can do with rsync, especially some of the more common things. There are a lot of options. There's a lot that you can do with it. Um, if you want more information, obviously, please check out my book. But also, you can just Google on rsync on uh, online, and you'll find lots of things, rsync demonstrations or typical rsync usage, um, things like that. And, and you'll find a lot of examples of how to use rsync. It's a very powerful tool, and I'm sure you'll find lots of ways to use it. If you'd like more information, I blog at www.accidentaladministrator.com, or you can visit my website at soundtraining.net. Subscribe to my newsletter at soundtraining.net slash newsletter. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Google. If you'd like more videos, we've got them, a lot of them, at our video channel at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like to get the companion book, I'd love for you to have a copy of it. It's available in paperback and Kindle edition from Amazon and other online resellers, or you can visit soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful for soundtraining.net. I'm Don Crawley. I'll see you next time. <laughs>